Hi all, back with more Combat Commander, playing with James Watton's solo digital bot, which is over here. I'm playing the first scenario, Fat Lip Key, uh, this is my part 11. Uh, okay, so the Russians have made a, an attempt to see to try and salvage the game. Uh, it's, a German, it's a German bot to go next, uh, it's their turn, uh, but the Russians have moved this all these squads down, they've got the advance in their, car, in their hand, they've got one ambush in their hand, they were hoping to have two ambushes, but uh, the event came up to discard a card from uh, the, their hand, so um, we took that one, which seemed to make uh, the most sense. However, if I took the advance card, they would not have been able to advance next turn, but uh, we, we worked it out that there was... I don't know three advanced cards in the deck still to come, so it was probably right to take to at least only allow him to have one ambush when he's going to go into this melee. And, I, and of course, I've got I'm thinking from both sides, it's all in my head. I can't change the fact that I know the for the bot that we've got these cards in my hand, that, but I don't so, know so much what the bot's got. I don't know if the bot's got any ambushes or not until we, until we move on to that part. Um, James came back and answered my my question regard to actually was a bit more to the text. Well, I should probably read out what he said, shouldn't I? So, like, give me a quick second here. So, yeah, quickly, my question had been, hi again, James, regarding the special fire orders, this is an R change that you made from the physical bot and that you used to choose which action was best for the bot. I know that it was brought to your attention that boar sighting should not be showing up while not playing a scenario defender. If this or another action comes up that is not valid, should we just ignore the action, carry it a normal fire order, or should it be considered to select one of the other actions that are valid? Um, well, he didn't come back suggesting that we should select another one. Um, he said, uh, for the digital bot, you shouldn't see any actions that are specific to postures if the bot isn't in that posture, such as boar sight in, hidden mines, etc., when not a defender. Well, we know that the boar sight shown up, but it was brought to his attention, so he realises he realizes that's a bug uh, as he carries on. If you do, then that's a bug and that needs fixing, so feel free to flag those up. Well, somebody's already done that. It wasn't me that flagged it up, but... Uh, you may see some for the wrong nations, however. I haven't got around to updating the action tables yet. Yeah, you know what I was thinking about was we, one of the actions we've not seen at all, which is... Um, I don't need the card. I'll just go and look at it in the real book, right? Is a marksmanship, which is applicable only to be in German or British, is it? Uh, marksmanship. May only be played just prior to the player making a fire roll. The attack must the attack must include a firing squad or team of the indicated nationality. Uh, oh, okay. So it must say on the card what the nationality is. So maybe there are some for each nationality. I guess I thought they were only specific to um the Germans or British because it had it on this card, bought as German or Britain. But we've been playing throughout as German and not once has marksmanship shown up. So possibly that's something that he, like he, he does admit there that there's, uh, you may see some for the wrong nations. I haven't got around to updating the actions table yet. It's been on my to-do list for a long time. I'll see if I can knock those out quickly this evening. Perhaps they have slipped my mind. So, yeah, I, 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 it crossed my mind there where I says, I can't remember seeing a marksmanship, which gives a plus two, if you, and if you're German or British, that's my, my understanding. I haven't seen marksmanship came up at all in, for the Russian side of things. So, I'm kind of, in fact, no, just look at the little card that you've got, Grant. That's that. Where, where did I put them? So, here's the, here's the German card. Uh, now, marksmanship. Well, there you go. There's only one. There's only one in the deck, so maybe that's a good reason why it's not come out so much. Uh, but as for the Russians, there's none. There's none in their deck. So, um, I don't know if the Americans might have it or not. My guess is not. It's probably just British in the... I don't have the British. That must be part of some other expansion or whatever. Uh, anyway, so carry on. It won't matter too much if you ignore it 
if you know it's incorrect or click the button again. The way the bot works, you may have a reduced chance of getting another action immediately after that, after, as it will have already accounted for playing board sign, for example. But it won't affect it too much. It doesn't track the number of actions played or anything like that. Yeah, so you're saying you could click the fire button again, but I think all you're going to... Well... No, because if you click the button again, you might get a totally different order, though. Click the button again means you're not guaranteed to get a fire order again, are you? Hmm. I'm not sure what he's suggesting there then. I was thinking, right, but you're just going to get it as a basic fire order. It's unlikely to click. Yeah, because there's nothing that... No. Uh, it carries on. If an action is valid for the nation and posture but doesn't make sense in the situation, such as assault fire, but the bot has no unactivated units with box firepower, then you can simply ignore it. Yeah, I've had assault fire coming up a few times. We have ignored that. We can't use it. Uh, he says, was there a specific situation that came up with us? Oh, I didn't realise he had asked a question at the end. My bad. Sorry for not reading that. Um, and I've just uh, <laughs> rudely replied, OK, James, thanks. Um, I'll come back to answering your question then. Uh no, not really a specific situation. It's just, I think it was just because with the physical components before, you, you picked the one that suited, and now you're just getting one randomly selected. Well, to be honest, only ones... No, no, we've had hand grenades, and we've had boar sighting. We know boar sighting shouldn't be there. But it's just, before, you, you wouldn't pick hand grenades if you went within uh, adjacent, so it wouldn't be an option. But then maybe that's a bit cheeky to be able to pick the one that you want, you know, because who's to say you've got that car in your hand? If the hand grenade is in your hand and you're not adjacent, then that's just tough, isn't it? So um, I maybe, I, I, you know what? I don't really think I needed to ask the question. I think when I was doing it, I was like, do you really need to ask this? And uh, I think it could have just been left alone, to be honest. I think if you get fire with boar sight on, you can't do it. You carry a fire or dot. If you get fire with marksmanship and you're, and you're not German or British, then you 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 just carry a fire or dot. If you get fire with hand grenades and you're not adjacent, you carry a fire or dot. If you are adjacent, you use the hand grenades. So I, I think it's pretty straightforward, really. Right. So anyway, let's go on with the game. Um, as the bots turn, so what what I was saying was the Russians have the advance and the fire or dot, in their hand. And unfortunately, well, it was them that put the smoke in the hex and now the Russians have realised that this is the time to go for it. I guess, unfortunately, they put the smoke in the hex at a time where... Well, I don't know if I had the ambush and the advance in the hand when they actually put the smoke in the hex, but I wasn't trying to, like, game that for myself, you know? But it just means that they've not really got a shot, a decent shot anyway, on um, the units that are adjacent. So they're going to come in next turn. So all they can hope for is they've got ambush cards in their hand, I guess. Um, well, let's see. Let's see what they're going to do. They they are going to have two orders. Well, maybe to play with first. So, um, and they are still sitting on sixteen victory points here in the lead of the game, quite comfortably. But this could cause trouble. So, right, real next order. Right, it's a move order. So no, well, actually. I'm saying no. Why not yes? <laughs> Why not yes? I don't need to I don't need that to keep this hex. They're clearly looking okay. I know what's in my hand and I can't avoid the fact that I know there's an advance there, but my guess is in this game that if you move out into the open adjacent to an enemy target, then you you have an advance ready in your hand to move in and melee the hex. So, why not? We've got a move order here. Why not move back? I mean, yes, I'm going to give them the chance of opportunity fire as well. But if we know that they're going to move into there, I mean, we could... Can we... Where would be the best place? I, I I guess the best place would probably be to try and get to here. And then I'm out of range of that, though. 
So in actual fact, here is probably the best place. And remember, none of these are worth any points, the objectives. Just that he controls all, all five of them. Uh, now, hang on, I've left that objective up there. That's German and America. Let's take it one. It's got Russian on the back. It's American, that's American. Russia will do another one with Russian on the back. Better one. Yeah, showing things about now. Right, right. Um, yeah, we should have, uh, because we're left as hex, this should be Russian controlled. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think so. I think we should move back. Just move back to here. And then they're going to have to move up adjacent again. Now, looking at my hand, I, I do have a move card in my hand, so... But it's going to allow us a chance to opportunity fire again. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, it makes sense. Now, obviously, if we didn't get this move order, we might we not be able to do this, and then we've, we're, but we've got the move order. So this has got a minus two, but a plus two from him, so that the movement for him is four. Um... Well, I actually think I want to move into this hex first because if I move in there first, no, oh, there's not point. There's no point moving in there first anyway. But if I move in there, he's got op fire possibilities. If I move in here, he cannot see, and this cannot see. This can. So I'm going to activate these to move. Um, I'm not going to activate the rifle unit. The rifle squad there. So I'm going to activate these to move. And they're going to move. They need to move together. Yeah. Oh, hang on. One, two, three. Yeah. Well, no, actually. They can move separately. But why would you want to do that, Grant? No, there's no point. There's no point moving them separately. I think, I think it's worse moving them separately. So I'm going to move these one. So... We've still got control of that, and that 700 smoke is still in that hex. So, we move back there for one, and we've still got three movement left. Oh, sorry, they, they've still got three movement left. Now, looking at my hand, I do have a fire card. Well, I've got two fire cards, but one of them's the one with ambush on it. So, do we take a shot with a light machine gun here? That's the only thing that's valid uh, and you've got to remember that well once we opt fire with that if i move again and they've got range and line of sight which they are going to have they'll get to fire again that's not a great shot is it that would be it's only three uh is there anything else well <laughs> they do have a sustained fire but it's on the advance card so the oh they've Oh, but that's a move card. I was going to say, they've got, they've got the crossfire, and I had two when finding a moving target, but this is the card with move on it. Oh, that's tough. And then the other, the other option they've got, because it's a light machine gun, is a sustained fire they could use for a plus two, but this is the advance card that they're kind of hoping to keep hold of. I mean, yes, I know there's three more on their deck, but I think... Well, if you... Let's let's look at the 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 numbers here. Three against, and remember they're going to be sitting in a minus one hex terrain wise. So, but he's got a seven plus two, so he's nine, and he's nine, and the plus one. So they're sitting at eight, and that's fine with three. So that's that's not great, but adding another two to that it starts to make it starts to make it sound like maybe something. And then of course once they back and here, which is my intention, okay, the Russians don't know that, but that is my intention, then they've got a shot again at us, we'll up fire, but it's going to be at a uh, 9 plus 2, they're both going to be at an 11, so it's going to be a tougher shot. I don't think, I think, I think we should up fire, just give you a look at my hand again, just to show you, where I'm all at. Obviously, 
feel like I need to keep these two. Can I feel like I'd like to keep this? Because that's then I can then move adjacent to them again next turn. Uh, and getting that building hex and take the objective, etc. Um, again, with that, they're going to have the chance to possibly alt fire back on us. But uh, this card's no good, obviously, but I could alt fire with us and just not. Not add the crossfire or the sustained fire, I think. Um, I think that, yeah. Right, sorry, I was paused a little there. Um, I felt the need to go and uh, respond to James's question there, as I, I hadn't really noticed that at the end of his, uh, his reply to me. Uh, basically, it's saying that, I, I suppose, not, there wasn't really anything special, but it's just in case he, his intention had been somewhat of the physical version where, where you got to choose you know if one didn't suit then you got to choose but there was nothing so stated to say that so I kind of also added that I don't think my question was really <laughs> worthy of a question to be honest right let's get back to this um so uh, yeah I'm going I think we do we do do alt fire right so and we activate Well, I don't see the need. I don't see not the, the point not to light activate them all. So the sergeant now the sergeant cannot. He's not got line of sight or rate, uh, but he's not got line of sight on this target. And this was one of the things I looked at at first. Um, more about could you know could I activate this unit and this unit could I activate them to op fire even though they can't see this at the moment. Because let's just say this moves out here next. I mean, that's silly, but let's just say it moves out there next. Then they do have line of sight and range. So, but that's allowed, it's allowed as long as there's something, there's something that you activate that has got line of sight and range on, on the moving target. So we, we do have that. Now, I think it's unlikely, in fact, I know for sure that it's not going to be any point activating these, but I suppose we don't know where this guy's going really. So we're going to use it, and by activating them all, it doesn't really, it's not really detrimental, is it? It's not really going to have a, a negative effect on them. It's not that I want to activate them again for something else. Um, they're activated for op fire now. So if anything else moves into their line of sight range, they can fire on it. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to use him to activate all of these. And then the only one that can actually carry out the fire is this. So, well, you've got to now decide, do you want sustained fire or crossfire, Grant? I don't think I do. Well, i tell you what, I'm, I'm tempted. Again, this makes this makes me feel like this is... Well, you, you're playing as a Russian's Grant, so you're not, you're not doing this as, as the bot. I'm tempted to use this, but then clearly, I want to move my units next turn. An advance, an advance is not any good. We know these are going to head back into the trees. I mean, I think even if you're playing against an, a, a physical opponent, you know what they're going to be doing. They're going to want to get into this terrain. They can't get in the building because they're going to overstack it. So they're going to go into the woods. And, uh, I mean, in actual fact, if they could they move deeper? No, they can't. They've only got three movement left. Oh, no, stop. Hang on. That's a... They had four, they moved in there for one, but they moved onto the road. So in actual fact, they do have four movement left. So that does actually say that they could move deeper into the woods, you know, getting out of line of sight. Okay, well, let's, let's just think if that's a bit... I'm sort of, anyway, well, they're at least going to move into there, which means an advance for our units next turn is only going to bring them... It's going to bring this one one hex. Okay, he would be adjacent to this. So he could consider... But if you use the advance now, then, you know, it's a move I need to go... Uh, you need to use a move card to get adjacent. Then use the advance to move in. So, so I really need the move card next turn. I don't think I should use the crossfire. How many move cards do you get then? Uh, well, the Russians... You might be about to get quite a few of them. Uh, 13. Let's go on that side. 13. Uh, quick glance. 
One, two, no, I should have paused here. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just looking through the dust card pile. Eight, nine. So I've got nine in the dust card pile, one in my hand, ten. So there's still three of them in the deck. And you can see, maybe get an idea of the size of the deck there, maybe. Uh, when I would say I've got a third of the deck left. Maybe. So... But, you know, if I use this move card, I'm going to draw back up. Oh, no. Hang on, hang on. We're not going to draw back up, are we? No, I think I should keep the move card. Yeah, because I'm... This is the German's turn right now. So any cards that I play are not going to get replenished until the end of my turn. And the end of my turns is going to be a wash. I'm not going to be able to do anything. Right, okay. We're still going to take the op fire on, but we're not going to play anything on top of that. Does that feel like a waste then? Maybe. Maybe. Well, it gets another card in my hand. Eh, I don't know. Right, I'm not, I'm not going to, but we are going to op fire. So we're going to op fire with three against them. Remember, they've got a minus one. Well, let's see if this works against us. If it was, it could be, could have been a five we were firing by here, but it's a three. So three on top of, it was like nine, so that wasn't bad. So 12, um, or if we had played that, it'd be 14 right now, but when, we well, haven't played that, so it's 12. Um, so they've got a defense roll now, what did I say? Remember, there's 7 plus 2, 9. They're both 9, but they're sitting on a minus 1 hex. So they're 8 against the 12. So we'll do the squad first. And this is a um, defense roll. So for the squad defense roll, um, they've got a... Tw uh, sorry, they've got a 8. They need to beat 12. Ooh, it's bad. Ooh. Um... Right, just hold on a second there then. The jam doesn't affect that. It's a double one that's a problem. Because um, this is just a defence roll. Uh, now, because we are playing it, the, the, the leader could still roll and get a concealment. If we got a conceal... Oh no, a concealment's not any good. A concealment's not any good because the terrain we're sitting in is minus one. In fact, the concealment's bad for us. Oh, this is not good. Because they, they have the initiative card. But, I dare, you know, they would really like to have that initiative card if they know there's a melee coming up. I think they've got to use it. I think they need... They need to get moved into these woods. Because if they get broken here... And I haven't quite fully oh if they get broken here they're, they're, they're moving with the unit so they've got four movement but they're moving with Lieutenant, Lieutenant Karstis who, who gives a plus two but remember they're carrying the medium machine gun which gives a minus two but I mean if they get flipped to that their movement's only one so I, I don't know I don't know how that's worked out while they're moving I guess I could probably find this an answer to this on BGG, or am I just being silly? I mean, if they've, if they've got, if they then get broken and they've got one movement, let's just say that they can move another hex that, that costs one movement. I mean, they want to move into the woods, which costs two. Are they allowed to use that one, or is the one that they've got now got, was that their full movement allowance? Or, do, you know, do they get the movement? Is the movement set in from the first time that they head off? And then they could still continue to move into the woods right now? I suppose I kind of need to know this. I, f I feel like that if they break right now, they're stuck in that hex. Maybe even the rulebook might take care of that, actually. Let's have a look in the rulebook first. I had a wee quick check on BGG. I couldn't find any in, in the rules. Um, and I came across a thread. I, I didn't study it completely, but somebody had 
laid out a question and answer down the bottom that basically said that the movement point it looked official to me. I don't I'm not sure exactly, but it basically says the movement goes as as you can't if the unit becomes broken it's got one movement point left. That's his total movement points allowance. So if he's already used three points, then he can't just play that other one. So this guy would be stuck here. And I don't like that. Well, I don't like that for more than one, uh, yeah, multiple reasons. Because then it's going to allow these guys, well, they still do need to use the move card. That's true, yeah. I'm thinking the fact that they could advance, but... Well, tell you what, if they drew another advance... Well, no, they're not going to get to draw cards before the, their next order, Grant. But I, I don't want them sitting on the road. I think I'm... Yeah. I think I'm going to play the initiative card. And re-roll this double one. Yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to pass this across to the Russians. And we're going to re-roll that double one. Now remember, the Russians now have that card, so they could re-roll again. So we're going to... This won't be a defence roll as such, this will just be a draw dice. So here we go. Right, ten. So they're good. Unless the Russians decide to throw the initiative back at us. But I think it's one of the cases where you, you don't really want to do that here because... We are on 8 and we need to beat a 12, so we only need a 5. So if they put, give us an initiative back and we roll again, we only need to beat a 5. Okay, we might we might not. But then we've got the initiative card in our hand as well. <laughs> so I think they'll leave that. And you know what? They're going to have the initiative card for the Malay maybe. So that might be more important. So, okay, so the squad does survive. So now we do a defence roll on the Lieutenant uh, Kirsty's. Um, he's on an 8 as well needs to be a 12 this is a defence roll right he's good as well right thank gosh right okay right so they survive the first um, up fire and then clearly they, they are moving back into here now I might just look at the possibility of moving them further back but that's him spent 2 more movement points they've got 2 left and this guy can clearly still see them, so he's going to fire again. It's not going to be as good a shot this time because they're in the woods. These cannot see. They don't have a line of sight on that, so they can't help out. So he's firing with three again. Um, I'm going to draw a card. And he's got an eight, a sniper. So three and eight is 11. So it's only one short of what he got the last time. However, we are in the woods this time. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much... He needed a big, big roll. So eight, but we've got a sniper. So let's check the sniper hex as L sax. That feels awful central. Ooh. This was a Russian roll. Oh yeah, it's here. That wasn't far away either. M6 would have got him. So L6 is there, so nothing doing. Um so their attack is eleven. Uh, there's, so the squad's on 9 plus 2 they're both on 11 so it's fine So, but they do need to take 2 defence rolls so first one for the squad is 11 that's good, no triggers and then for Lieutenant Karsties oh that's not good for the Russians that's came at a bad time ok so Lieutenant Karsties is going to be ok However, there is a chance that the game could be over. So we need to stop, pause things for now. I'll take his attack dice away because nothing more's happened like that. I'll leave the two movement points there. Um, so this is going to move... Now, this is where the time trigger moves on. And, of course, the sudden death trigger is there. So now we're going to roll... And if we get less than an 8, the game's going to end. Let me just double check. Yeah, I'd prefer this, this in the rule book just for now. Time 6, rule 6. 6. Right, hang on. 
Right, so immediately after advancing the time marker, which I've done, now I'll play pauses so that the following steps may be executed. Players must pr first perform the following two steps in order to show it. Player triggering the time advance only shuffles his deck and discard pile together to form a new draw pile. The triggering player makes a sudden death roll if appropriate. Well, that is appropriate. So I've got to shuffle first. And then... So let's just see, is it under the number? If the result is less than the number, not equal, just less than the number um, that's on the time track, not the sudden death marker, so it's an 8, then the game immediately ends. So less than an 8, so a 7 or less. Right, so, but first I need to go here because the deck needs to be shuffled, so I think I need to click on bot rolls time trigger here. Um, now this might be a bit out of sequence because it might start telling me to put dig ins. So I don't I know I need to draw two dice here, but I think I should be shuffling the deck first. Because that's what you're meant to do, isn't it? Player triggering a time advance only shuffles his deck and discard pile together to form a new draw pile. So I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna bot rolls time trigger. If there are any dig ins do come up, we'll just keep them in mind in case the game does not end. So bot rolls time trigger, here we go. Right, so no actions from him, so he's not going to do any dig-ins. However, now my guess is the deck's been shuffled up, so now I can roll two dice. And if we get a seven or less, the game ends. Here we go. Oh, it is. Game over. Yeah. That's it. Ah. Well, we were just too slow. I, I mean, I think, I think we started doing the right thing, but, uh, and uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop a minute, stop a minute. <laughs> that was close. I mean, I'm assuming I can still re-roll. That's a die roll. Um, I don't see why not. Right, they might not be finished yet. Uh, so just looking up, and I should have, and I should have been re rolling 9.1, 9 9.2. 9 um, I, I actually don't think he's going to tell me, and he's going to tell me you can use it to re roll a dice. Any time during the game the player are currently in control of the initiative card may choose to cancel all effects of the last die roll to have it been made, including any die trigger associated with it, and cause it to be re rolled. The decision must be made prior to any trigger results of that role being implemented. When a player calls for a re-roll in this manner, you must give the initiative card to the opponent. The passing of the initiative can occur an unlimited number of times during the game, even during the same series of die rolls. So, basically, we could fight against this. Um... Yeah, I mean, the... the oh, hang on. No, no, no. No, I, it's fine. I, I, I d didn't really need to go and wait for this. We are going to use the initiative card. We're re-rolling this. So we're passing this over to this, the Germans. And then this is going to be um, re-rolled by the bot. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a re-roll. It's just a re -roll. Uh, Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done this... Force them to re-roll. Have I? Yeah, you're, you're getting them to re-roll, Grant. It's, uh, I need to collect the dice here. So, again, we need a 7 or less. If it's a 7 or less, we're fine. We still... The, well, sorry, the the, the bot... The game's going to end. If it's not, then the bot can then pass the initiative back and try again. So, let's re-roll. Right, so we've got an 8, which is bang on the number. It didn't need to be less than an 8. So... The Germans are going to pass us back to the... <laughs> this could maybe go on for a bit, maybe. Uh, so we're going to pass us back and we're going to re-roll this again because they want the game to end because they're going to win. And we're going to draw dice again. We need a seven or less. They get a six. So the game is now going to end yet again. However, here, come, here it comes again. So a seven or less still ends again. Higher than that and may <laughs> pass that initiative back again. 
Oh man, right. Okay, we're going to do that again. It's eventually going to end, I suppose. Right, so a seven or less. <laughs> right, here it comes again. They get a re-roll because they don't want we, we don't want the game to end. Oh, and it does this time. Needed this well, needed higher than a seven. And now the the Russians don't have the initiative card. We've got the Germans got an initiative card. We yeah, you're you're a traitor, Grant. You've been a German all the time. You know it. <laughs> You've been just playing the game along. One to win for the Germans. Yeah uh, no, not at all. Um Okay, that's it then. That is the end of the game. Oh, what am I going to do with the rest of the night now? <laughs> yeah, I had a bit more left. Well, I, yeah, I probably had a bit more left in me right now as well. Well, I did see I wanted to take down the table and uh, mess about with Skies Above Britain, but I'm not going to record the bits. Um, I'm just going to play about with some of the, the little scenarios you get, the dogfight scenarios and the... Um, what was it, bomber scenarios, I think they're the next ones, then I think there's something else after that. But it's all nice little bits you can just mess, mess about with. There's a few video, videos out there of people doing them. Um, to be honest, I didn't get around to watching them. But I'll tell you what, it's one of these games, it looks like it's one of these games that see watching some of the video footage, if you've not tried the game yourself, it's going to mean... <sighs> I suppose that there's a lot, a lot of games are like that. I find a lot of games that see when I watch a video before I've even played it, the game, I've even tried to play it, uh, it just mean, means nothing to me. And then you try to play the game, you start understanding it, and you go back and watch these videos again, and they're so helpful. That's when they become really helpful. Um, but uh, I think watching them before you've not tried anything yourself, it's uh, a bit of a... Turns into a bit of a mess. Anyway, that's not... Well, let's allow this game to end, Grant. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm just, yeah, 30 some minutes in there and thought we'd create a part here and then get another part started. But I suppose I knew it was quite possible that it might be coming to an end. So there you go. We go... Um, well, I'm saying that the Germans have won, but... Well, I'm guessing that when we come to the end of the game... We chair the victory points. Um, game end, 6.3. I think that's where I was, to be honest. Game of combat, commander will generally end in one of four ways. Player is forced to place one of his eliminated units in the space of the casualty track, occupied by his surrender marker. That is here, whereas the, the Russians were looking more likely to end the game, lose the game that way. Uh, player's last remaining unit on the map is eliminated. Um, well, I suppose the Germans were more likely to uh, have that fate, but um, yeah, probably a bit. We were about the same. Uh, a player's last remaining unit on the map voluntarily exits the map, and then a sudden death roll is made that is less than the number in the space currently occupied by the time marker. If the fir first or second situation above occurs, that player immediately automatically loses the game. Uh, jumping on, if the third or fourth situation, which is the fourth situation we're talking about, sudden death roll, uh, and the first two situations do not apply, players must reveal any secret objective chats and award their victory points to current controller. Well, we didn't have any secret objectives. Then the player with a higher victory point total, that is the victory point marker is on his side of the zero space, wins the game. Uh, if the victory point marker is in the zero space, the player holding an initiative card wins the game. So there's no no chance of a draw because you've got that initiative card swapping hands, as it did quite a lot just at the end. And as you can see, the Germans are sitting on 16 victory points. That's Axis side, and that's our side. So they're on 16 points. So it wasn't just a win. It was a, a massacre. We got really um, slaughtered there. Um... Well, good. I was like when um, the AI defeats me. Uh, yeah, I mean, some games that I now go back and play, like some of the DDAT series and... Uh, well, the, the DDAT series in particular. I mean, spoiler alert, I've never been victorious at any of the games. Um, so it would, it would be nice to... Um, 
although I, I suppose my last game of DD at Oma Beach, uh, I took some things away thinking, yeah, I made, I made some errors that, because I was more in, interested in the, the well, partly getting, getting all the rules right is, is difficult in itself. Um, but once I got up there and off the beaches and whatever, I was a bit lost to how to go about. My strategy was a bit messed up, really. And I think if I went back to that game, I'd like to think I'd do a better job at it. But, but uh, they, are, they, are, they are tough games. and But it's there are some games out there that I played that you win against the bot and then you win again. And then that right away sort of starts putting me off a bit. So, so it's good that it's beat me. Uh, it makes me want to come back and for more. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, I suppose I could possibly set up another scenario. I would probably just move on to the second one, but maybe I should look through them and pick one specifically. I wouldn't know which one was better suited to using the bot. Maybe maybe there are some that are better suited to using the bot. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't know where to start looking for that, but... Uh, I don't think I should do that, because I've made that mistake in the past, and it ends up... I don't get right through the scenario, and I end up taking the game down and not finishing the playthrough. I have been guilty of that a few times. More recently, not not when I first started doing the recordings, but more recently I've done that, and then... Because I have other games set up on other tables, and they get left lying, and... I suppose I'm a bit spoilt for space here, so... Um, and the, the tables that I've got basically just got lucky with that really um, okay so well I've stretched out to 41 minutes I enjoyed that I did enjoy it um, I do want to do more of this and once you get in the swing of it it's, it's pretty quick um, I mean okay that what is this part 11 did I say well, it was part 9 we got up to part 9 with the previous one I mean, generally, okay, they average it about an hour long, so it's nine hours for the first one, 11 hours for this one. That's nothing in my video length <laughs> playthroughs, um, if you go, if you watched any of the longer stuff. It's, n it's not really a lot at all, but um, you can see this game can move on quite quickly. I was even getting, getting that going myself, wasn't I? Just if I maybe didn't stop and think about things so much but I know a lot of you out there quite like that um, and that's what I'd be doing if I wasn't recording uh, honestly that's what I would be doing um, I tr I, when I first ever rec hit the record button and tried to do one of these videos I tried to not do that but I just found it difficult and then I think some folk were encouraging me to carry on but you know don't you don't need to look at every single thing and go through every single rule and, and rules wise I do I want to get them all right and then of course my thinking comes in and what the best moves I'm I'm not going to be brilliant at these games I know that but I like to think the moves through and sort of you know that's what makes it fun isn't it well for me anyway but I dare say uh, uh, definitely will scare there's <laughs> I'm sure there's been a lot of folk started watching some of my videos and thought. Uh -uh, let's get out of here which is fine you know everybody's got their own tastes and how they do things um okay i'll just stop there then i don't think there's any more to talk about with us um i don't know what we'll see next then maybe it will be skies above britain maybe i probably should go back across to the other table it's always a thought though it's like yeah, you've got to pick up the rule book again. <laughs> and the fact that this has been a tactical game as well, tactical squad level, similar to what I've been playing across there, means that it's going to, you know, I'm going to be remembering things from this and trying to forget them when I go across there. Um, anyway. Okay, well, that was good. I enjoyed that. And um, hope it was useful to some of you out there or and Sean uh, uh, yeah and many thanks to James as well James Watton for his bot I mean that must take some time and effort to I mean not only that he's done physical components for it first and then he's done this digital implementation of it as well so a lot of his own personal work I mean I don't suppose there's any money however there is he um, what is his uh, is it not highlighted here he's 
his website. Well, I say website. No, that's it's there. Rising Sun Studios. Right, in fact, if I go... If I go back here, can we... Let's just go back a check. How do I... How do I close this out? Hang on a second. Yeah, so I couldn't quite find a way to go back there, so I just re, uh, reopened the page. So there, there's his um, uh, web page, Rising Sun Studios, and there's his products. He's got some... A debt builder app for Arkham Horror... Sentry Eliminate Hostel in 2000. I'm not sure what these things are. Drop Zone Commander units. Yeah, I'm not sure what these are. Uh, but there's a Combat Commander AI bot. So we click on that and... Um, like I saying, physical there. Solar rules. Yeah, that's the actual... That's the actual physical ones. So, but where was it? Was the digital one there? That click back there. I don't know then. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, I got I got to it from his uh, from that. It's probably back on page one. Uh, here we go. App CC bot. There you go. Digital edition. There you go. That that what I was looking for. There's a donate page for it. Uh, all the work that goes making this soul bot and all our web apps is done purely out of passion for the game, programming in general. Uh, if you enjoy any of our web apps and wish to express your appreciation and donation, here are some options for you. PayPal donate. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna make a wee donation to that. I'll not go and click on the details because um, I think it's really good. And uh, like I say, it's physical components as well. Uh, uh, you know, worthy of, worthy of giving the guy something back for that, um, even if it's just a couple of pounds or whatever. Uh, um, if everybody had done that, it'd be, you know, keep on ticking over. Uh, okay, I'll get away for now, and uh, I'll be back with something. Um, I'm not sure what, but uh, I'll be back with something sometime soon. Cheers.